in honor of WrestleMania week. All right. We can hear you. <laughs> no, I know you can hear me, but I was worried about <laughs> feedback from my computer. Right. No, we don't. We no, you, you guys? Oh, yeah. You, you crack them. You just, you do the uh, echo cancellation. Dave, come on. Shut the Shut okay. the fuck up. Eric? I saw, Dave, I Dave. saw you in that music video, Eric. You saw me, Dave? Oh. Dave? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you had a guest appearance in the horse burner video. Oh. Did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you make that video? When? Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. I'm sorry. Yeah. You made that video. <laughs> you How edited did you not... the fucking video. I forgot. And you that... didn't remember you that you were in it? it? Yeah, I. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Uh, Are yeah, we talking to we... Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm... Earlier would have been better. I, I was a little more with it. <laughs> uh, yes, all we up. did. We did like gang vocals in Adam's basement. So, oh, nice. That's the part that I was in. Mm-hmm. Sweet. I remember now. <laughs> nice. All hey, right. Check out Hearst Burner. Horse, Horse Burner. Hearst Burner. <laughs> Hearst Burner. Horse Burner. Sorry. Hearst check out Burner. Hearst Burner. Hey, Horse Burner. <laughs> Your new name is Hearst Burner. Hearst. <laughs> Kevin's spending too much into- time with rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his neck. It's literally you know, it, it is burnt my red. Shoulders are not. <laughs> you are a lobster. He is a redneck. <laughs> Kevin, do you ever use SPF, like suntan lotion or anything? It's been sunscreen. winter in Ohio. Do, do you mm. use sunscreen? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. In Hawaii. <laughs> On the I job? I definitely did. On the job? Uh, occasionally. Yes, okay. I know I'm outside all day. <laughs> Welcome back to another. To no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you! Welcome back to the movie podium, a weekly podcast where we collectively choose a movie to watch, and at the end of the week, we get together and talk about it. It's like a book club, but for but movies. For movies. But for movies. But for movies. <laughs> What's a butt for? Pooping, silly. Pooping, silly. <laughs> We also came up but with for a movies. Set of questions to ask ourselves, <laughs> such as, is this a top three movie or a podium role? Or, whoop, fuck, god damn it. <laughs> we also came up with a set of questions to ask ourselves, such as, is this a podium movie or a top three in the year of its respective release? I'm your host, Matt Scott. I'm with my dudes, Eric. Hello, Matt. Daniel. Hey, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dave. Hey, Matt. Am I lagging? And no. No. I don't Cooking think with so. Kevin. That's me. Cooking with Kevin. <laughs> Cooking, Cooking with, with Kevin. Kevin. Short version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get the long version anymore after what he did last week. <laughs> yeah, I know. No. <laughs> I think he should just get the. And that's yeah, it. Was that last yeah. We should really just we should really just be like, and Kevin's here for some reason. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Kevin's oh, this, here. The, this We're gonna, gonna mute be, his mic. Are we back in order? So, you are correct. <laughs> this week we are back on our timeline. Hello Ooh. timeline. Hello timeline. This Swear year, it. it's 2009, and without further ado, we present our next movie. Nancy ain't got no humanity. Destroyed. Nine, 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 nine. Nazis are bad, no matter what Kevin thinks. Nazis are bad. All fucking Nazis are fucking bad. No matter what Kevin thinks. Um, I definitely agree that Nazis are fucking bad. <laughs> I just right. said that straight See? right at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is easily one of the movie podium's favorite directors. One of our first podium segments, we actually went and named our top three Tarantino movies, at least some of us. I can't remember, was Inglorious Bastards on everyone's list? It was, it was a mine. mine. Daniel? I, I think don't it was remember. me, you, Eric, and Kevin. I think it was. I we'll don't it was. remember. <laughs> Dang, I that think was it would that. Be on mine. 
Yeah. Well, it was I hate to so say so long ago. Sorry. I know. Well, no. So, so I hate to say that this Inglorious Bastards movie is a classic because it's only 15 years old, but it does feel timeless. Tarantino had a little bit of a dry spell after Kill Bill 2, which came out in 2004. There was the Death Proof Planet Terror combo that came out in 2007, if you remember. But it didn't really yeah. make that same splash that Tarantino's movies are accustomed to doing. Yeah. Well, it took 10 years to write this script. He finally got this movie made, and it was released in 2009. And really put him at the forefront of directors in our era. He had so many good characters. Or One of his things is that he has a knack for creating some unforgettable characters, such as Lieutenant Aldo Rain, played by Brad Pitt, and of course an all-time character in Colonel Hans Landa. He loves storytelling. He likes those chapters. It all kind of fits into what we see now, and he does such a good job of the storytelling. Uh, Dave, where does Tarantino rank on your favorite director's list? I mean, he's probably high on the list, but I don't, I don't think I have like I don't just go see a movie for a, a director. Mm. Like it, it's got to be something that interests me. Like it, so, but if I mean, naturally. Uh, Tarantino's made a few movies that, you know, I really liked. Probably Django Unchained being one of my favorites of his. Mm, good choice. Yeah, That's I remember seeing that one in theaters. Yeah, and really he only has one more movie to make, according to him, as his ten movies he's going to make. So I'm I glad you we'll be said that because I, I thought they were already done. Mm. So Kill but, Bill counts as one. So that would be the I see. The yeah, nine. he's in the process of getting his tenth one now. Okay. Nothing's yep. been released about it, but it's yep. been announced that he's doing that. So I'm sure we're all excited for that. All right. Before we get into our random ass facts, please like this video. Subscribe to our channel. It's like. cool to see our channel grow. We're <laughs> yeah, slowly getting higher and higher, and it's awesome to see and we're <laughs> We're pretty soon, stoked on that, guys. Soon we're going to be up there with John. <laughs> <laughs> we we just hit a million views on YouTube, which is a pretty crazy stat, considering we yeah. created this this podcast, what, less than a year ago. We hit a million views. Like 41 weeks. Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. You got that exact number? Yeah. It's Almost like we a look at you. Know, subscribers. Yeah. We are, uh, we are well on our way. So, so thank you, thanks, everyone. guys. Yeah, and yes, yes. Check out some shirts and koozies. <laughs> oh man, I didn't even see that shirt at that Where, at the movie where'd you podium. Get that? Yeah, at the moviepodium.net. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so help us out. Hang out with us. Hope you guys like this. All right, you ready for some random ass facts? Yes. Oh yeah. All right, let's do it. It's got an 8.4 on IMDb. Ooh. Is that higher than Thor? Significantly higher than <laughs> Thor. Is this, our, job, highest, is this yeah, our highest movie? The, yeah, no, I was going to ask the, the Dark same thing. Knight. The Dark Knight was ranked third all time on IMDb's list, and we just what did was, that in 2008. What was the, Done the ranking? Timeline got fucked up. What? Yeah. What was the ranking on that? Uh, on the eight point four, probably in the top on probably top one hundred. No, I mean like what was the Dark Knight? Ranked? Oh, what was the what was the number? Um, I believe yeah. it was nine point one. Let me see. I will verify that. Yeah, nine great. point oh, zero. Nine point oh, zero. Oh dang! Nine close. even. Why did right. you say nine point zero? Why didn't you just say nine? Uh, because there's a point and a zero. Because <laughs> I wanted to sound fancy, Dave. We like tenths. Sound like an idiot. <laughs> You you're sound so like fancy an shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. I do sound like an idiot. There's a good reason for that, too. I don't believe it. So this <laughs> team because Dan I am one. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. Though. Believe it or not. I'm going to believe it. All right. So I'm with all the movies will. that have come out <laughs> with Tarantino's name on it, this is actually the first time 
that an actor or actress had won best o- or an Oscar for best actor or supporting actor in Christoph Waltz. That's Solid. surprising, but also not surprising. Yeah, well, I mean, he does only get one year. Pieces a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, true. agreed. So Other a lot of times, like, like all the best stuff is spread a l- around a lot of people, and they mm-hmm. cannibalize their own votes. You know, someone sure. someone thinks that like Samuel L. Jackson was the best in uh, Reservoir Every Dogs Tarantino or Pulp movie. Fiction or whichever one. I don't remember. Pulp Fiction. Uh, pulp, pulp Fiction. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. And then, like, someone else thinks, like, oh, uh, one of the other actors. I don't know. Yeah, John Travolta. Yeah, John Travolta. You're doing yeah. great, Daniel. Bruce Willis. Pulp, Thank you. Pulp Fiction. <laughs> it's like you Uma just got Thurman. off work. <laughs> no, like I'm, hopped up, work. I'm hopped up on antihistamines. Oh, that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm ill. Oh, fun times. <laughs> you got a license to ill? <laughs> um, crazy, crazy enough, it did not win Best Picture, nor did he win Best Director for this movie. Both yeah, went the to Hurt, Hurt Locker, Locker this year, wasn't it? Yeah. The Hurt Locker. Yeah, great movie. Directed yeah, by Catherine Bigelow. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Tarantino actually strangled Bridget von Hammersmark yeah. for real. So that, those were his hands. He was worried that Christoph Waltz wouldn't know how to do it, whether he'd do he'd go too hard or not go hard enough to where it was not believable. So Tarantino said, hey, I'll do it. And so he literally used his hands to choke her. That's a, that's <laughs> that's a scene, one. man. That is a scene. <laughs> oh, that's intense. So you were probably wondering why Shoshana – made that movie at the end and why it was in English. Well, originally Tarantino wanted it in French, but it was suggested by the actress herself who plays Shoshana, Melanie Laurent, that it should be done in English to make the finale more powerful to American viewers. So if we saw it in French and were reading it, it wouldn't necessarily resonate as as well as it did by seeing it and hearing it. Yeah, I think that was a good call. I do too. I yeah. mean, it's a nitpick that it wasn't in yeah, it, like yeah. it was For in an English. American audience. Yeah. But it makes sense. Anyone want to guess Aldo Rain's body count in this movie? I don't think it's very high. Lieutenant. Are we talking about on screen kills or kills attributed on to the bastards? On screen oh, kills. Um Yeah. On screen That's body Brad Pitt's count. character, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. I don't okay. know. Grazie. I'll, I'll, I'll say, say five. I'm gonna say I'm, one. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say, say I'm gonna say three. Well, Daniel hopped up on antihistamines, got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about one. it. The only one I remember <laughs> is the one at the end where he grabs exactly. Christoph Waltz yeah, when he shoots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, and he shoots yeah. <laughs> You were so supposed to protect that, that's that guy. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a great quote. Um, it's part of the deal. <laughs> so there, so he only killed one person, like we said at the end. Can anybody guess the total body count? A little more than one. <laughs> oh, lots. Oh, I don't even want. I don't even want to guess that. Yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> like, how can you count? They're just unloading yeah. machine guns. This is in like the, in fourth in grade. Theater. When you're looking at all the marbles and you're like, how many marbles are there? Yeah, I mean, oh, there's a whole a movie theater jar. burned down. Yeah, a exactly. A whole movie theater burned down. I'm going to say. <laughs> so that's uh, like. 400. Because it was like 300 some seats, right? Yeah. 350 some seats in the theater. So, yeah. I'm going to say around 400. Dave's copying me. <laughs> I'm yeah, not even going to guess. <laughs> those are good guesses. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily entirely full. The total body count that I had at least seen was 301, which is still we probably the most that we've talked about. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that new tattoo. Look at that tattoo. That, tattoo. One's, new. that one's new. Oh, I there like it, it is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did anyone catch what op- the operation was called when they were trying to get them all in the movie theater? Does anybody remember? Oh shit! I don't remember. I definitely remember uh, what you said. Coin, close. Klein, 
Coin, Klein, Kino, Operation Kino, Kino. Operation Kino, Kino, yes. which K I N O or K I, yeah, K I N O, yep, which isn't very secretive when you consider that it's just movie theater in German. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> the more you know, I don't know any German. <laughs> All right. Last I know one. Das and uh, <laughs> Krieg is war. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you have a problem. I'm a man of Farad. <laughs> <laughs> Farad is bicycle. Oh, boy. <laughs> you have a problem with your bicycle. <laughs> Keep going, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> no, I love hearing German. For <laughs> This actually kind of helps my uh, casting. So I uh, can't wait to get through that. <laughs> Last one, and this is a fun one to wrap your head around, okay? So Michael Fassbender was born in Germany to German and Irish parents, but was raised in Ireland. German is his first language, Gaelic is his second language, and English is his third. Here he plays an Englishman who goes undercover as a German and who can speak German fluently but has difficulty hiding his accent. How bizarre is that? He plays an American or an Englishman <laughs> that can't speak German without an like without the obvious accent, but he actually is German in real life and lived in English. I mean, it's just like the irony there is just Well, it's probably it's probably one of those things like it's easy for us to do like bad impersonations of other people. It, mm. Like in English, like I can do a Southern accent, and yeah. because it's <laughs> beautiful, it's but you're right. You know, it's not good, but it's and you there. sound exactly like Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, I sound like Kyle Schwarber, so I'm not much better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had a couple that I came across. I oh yeah, go ahead. Them. All right. Um, there's a million on this one. Oh yeah, there, there's quite a few. But <laughs> one was one I thought was interesting, and it goes with pop culture and all that fun stuff. Is uh, BJ Novak actually took a leave from the office mm. uh, to film this and um, to make that work in the show. There was a line in that show that goes, "He's going to Thailand with uh, friends from high school." <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and that's why he was gone from that. And yeah. then, um I should have wrote down the actor's name. I'm I'm terrible for that. But uh, the the dude that played Stiglitz is actually German and absolutely hates Nazis. Yeah, <laughs> like I did he see doesn't that. want any connection to that at all. But he was sold by the part where he's a German that gets to kill Nazis, <laughs> and that's why he took this part. Hell yeah! <laughs> was it Eli Roth? Maybe I can't remember. Go ahead. No, not no. Stiglitz. Eli Roth was one of the original. It was Donnie? Bastard. Yeah, His that's name right. Is Till, Till Darwin. Schweiger. Oh, Hugo Schweiger. Stiglitz. That's right. That's right. No, um, Eli Roth was Donnie. Yeah. Whatever, Dogowitz or whatever. Yeah, Donowitz. Donnie Donowitz. Donowitz. All right, go. You had any more, Kevin? The Bear Jew. Oh, yeah, the Bear Jew. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That, that that was it. I wanted to. Th- I, I saw these <clears> and I I double checked the similarities, so that was actually. I think they were actually correct. All right. Nice. Um, what do you think? Or what movie or what uh what made more money for uh what's his name BJ Novak? Is that his yeah. name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems like I'm messing up that name. No, it's BJ Novak. No, right. you got it. What do you okay? So what do you think made more for him, Office or this? Oh, the Office. <laughs> yeah, the Office. Hundred percent. The Office for sure. It's funny. Uh, that you know how you know how many oh, the different channels syndicate the Office? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, <laughs> he produced The Office too, didn't he? Like yeah, he wasn't just a actor. yeah. He was a writer on it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, probably producer. I think he's a better producer writer than he is actor. Personally, yes. I thought his part was in. Eh. Well, movie, Eli Roth was also a director, right? He yeah. wasn't an actor, right? I didn't Another see that. kind of like what? That's weird. <laughs> yep. You guys ready for some questions? Let's oh, do yeah. it. See. All right. Favorite thing about the movie? No, it's da. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong movie. We're over that movie. No more da's. All right. Let's see. Uh, Eric, 
What's your favorite thing about the movie? My favorite thing about this movie was the cinematography. Just because Tarantino movies always look amazing. And this was nothing but amazing looking. And just the way that he tells the story visually, like in addition to the awesome um, lines. And yeah, it's just, that's one of my favorite things about Tarantino movies. Yeah, it's the attention to detail, right? Everything mm-hmm. has a symbol or meaning, and it's so beautiful to see. Yeah. It's like the the end of the first scene where Shoshana is running away, and then uh, what's Arbonne. Heinz, Franz? Or the, Hans. Christ- Hans, Hans Landa. Okay. Hans, like, walks out the door, but it's like you're in – the camera's inside the house, and yep. – it's just this black frame, and then he just walks out. Like, that's a, such a cool shot. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of a homage to um, Unforgiven, which is a old Clint Eastwood movie that won Best Picture back in, like, 92 or so. But it's okay. he has a lot of – I mean, he has so much respect for cinema, those shots, yeah. and there's, like, oh, something going on in his head at all times. So, yeah, that, I yeah. totally agree with the, his vision, the way he puts pictures on the screen. Um, Daniel, what was your favorite thing about the movie? My favorite thing about this movie is that uh, this is when Tarantino entered his revenge porn uh, part of his career. Because <laughs> he did yeah. this in Django yep. Unchained. And Django. And yep. basically said, like, you know who, who fucking sucked? Nazis. You know who else fucking sucked? Slave owners. <laughs> and you know what he did to him? He killed him. Hey, a lot of them. Hell in yeah. Very, hell yeah. very gruesome detail. <laughs> And well, it's yes. just like, yeah, fuck you, Nazis, you pieces of shit. <laughs> and it's cathartic <laughs> and it's good. And everything yeah, therapeutic. with this whole yeah. shit where like people are like, eh, you know, the Nazis aren't that bad. Or like, you know, Nazis aren't that bad. <laughs> it's like, no, no fuck no. you. Nazis are bad. Yeah. They deserve yeah. to be killed. <laughs> and I hope they burn in hell. And they I did agree. in this case. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, well said. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll applaud that. <laughs> uh, Dave, what was your favorite thing? Just the embellished story yeah. of of uh, a group of special, like, secret service <laughs> Jewish Americans going around scalping Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy ball game. Yeah, this was supposed to be prior to D Day, and uh, mm, they seem yeah. him prior to scare them. <laughs> more, more specifically, the the bar scene, like mm-hmm. everything about oh, how the the God. bar scene was shot, like from the beginning of him questioning why the meetings in a basement. Don't yeah. you know you can't do a lot of good fighting in a basement? Still like, fighting in a basement. The the dialogue and Love everything. It. The uh, giving himself away by putting up the three fingers this way instead of the German way, and yeah, yeah, the movie's I, the movie's awesome. Well said. Um, oh, go ahead, Daniel. Uh, I was just going to clarify something Kevin said. Kevin said it takes place before D Day. Part of it takes place before D Day. Yeah, like, they, like, they yes, mentioned yes, it. Yes. yes. Because yep. it's mentioned Hitler that they got on the beach. That the allies are on the beach. Mm-hmm. He kind of knows, and I think I talked about this later, but he he kind of knows that they're losing at this point. He when he says that, yeah, they're on the beach. It's almost like he's already knows what's going to happen or how it's playing out. Um, yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say it's, this is a it's a great World War Two movie. Which I've got my top five World War Two movies. No, nice. uh, uh, right off the bat. All right, number five, Captain America. A little controversial. It's a superhero movie, but it takes place during World War Two. Yeah, I, uh, I dig number, that pick. We'll allow it. It's a good number pick. number four, Dunkirk. Uh, Yep. Taking place from like a, a non-American perspective. I thought it was, I mean, the action shots in that movie are insane. Like, I, I thought it was great. 
Uh, number three, the newer, the new movie Oppenheimer. I thought it was a mm, nice. great different take on yes. a, like a something we hadn't really seen with World War II before. I still number need to two, see that. Uh, the Bastards. This movie, I like it. Just a kind of a you know theatrical fake kind of way of how we we took out Hitler. <laughs> and then number one, I think this is everybody's, probably everybody's favorite World War II movie, Saving Private Ryan with Tom oh, Hanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a great one. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very good. It's Deva, definitely. So my favorite thing Quit is actually... like that. God don't damn Don't tell me what hey, to do, Dave. Right. <laughs> so... My favorite thing is the exact same as Dave's, actually. It's the bar scene as well. Like, that scene, I, I think I have a thing for basement bars. Remember Daniel, that one that we went to in San Antonio? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just that took was a turn a for a weird. <laughs> it's getting there. Yeah, that place is awesome. And uh, Dave, remember that karaoke basement that we you took us to in Atlanta? Yeah. <laughs> These are pretty awesome. Yeah, that place is awesome. Well, <laughs> so I think uh, the Dark Horse. Yeah, yeah that's it. I, so I kind well, of have a thing. Are you, what that. about the basement bar in New York on your bachelor party? Yeah, well, that one too. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that one. So, was yeah. The, I mean, was the, the dungeon in Louisiana? Yeah. Do, do yeah, you New go Orleans. downstairs for that? Do. Or is it I, just in that back alley? No, it's in the back I alley. And I think you go upstairs, right? don't you? Okay, yeah, maybe oh you're right. I don't know, but I that, mean, if it may not can be remember, a basement, but that place is bad. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm saying I've never been, I've sober, never no. been, uh, like, I've never been not drunk enough to remember getting to the dungeon. Yeah. I couldn't take you back to the dungeon because <laughs> I was hammered <laughs> every time I went to the dungeon. But uh, I can tell you about it's the like inside. Just, yeah. It's I like beer. get you there. <laughs> It's like it's like beer fest. You have to get intoxicated to be able to find it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's I, also in a basement. <laughs> I can't even remember other than like you're not allowed to take pictures inside. That's the only yeah, like, I real small detail I remember. I remember. Everything else <laughs> don't remember. So I mean, Dave pretty much tackled what I what I was gonna say with the the number three. Um, also, I like how no one feels safe in a Tarantino movie, and this scene kind of is the most evident of that. Like I yeah, couldn't believe yeah. that Michael Fassbender dies in this at that yeah. point. Like he seemed like he was going to have a bigger role and he's such a good actor that I was really shocked when it was like, wait, he just died. And <laughs> yeah. And like, ha- and everybody except Bridget dies in this, the guy who, who you think was going to survive. Cause you know, is he just uh, was celebrating the birth of his, his daughter, Wilhelm. Yeah, and you're like, oh, he's Wilhelm's gonna survive. <laughs> Boom, and she shoots me. You're like, no one's safe in a Tarantino movie. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does get to have that great dialogue with Michael Myers, though. Like that. Oh, Mike Fox. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, they ha- oh, that dialogue yeah. His, that they have before, like going movie. on the mission, is so good. Like, he's he's only on this movie for 18 minutes, I think, and he's like might be the best act, like well, other than Christoph Waltz, but still, he's great in this uh, for the time he's in it. Um, yeah. So I actually, hilariously enough, had a top five for this one, too. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, 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 nice. Oh. nice, nice. Top five favorite bar scenes of all time. <laughs> oh, okay. that's a good one. I like it. I'm, I'm bummed I didn't think of that one. I so like I had an outside looking in, and it's The Shining, where Jack Torrance mm. sits at the bar and has an imaginary conversation with Lloyd. Number five, I have Blues Brothers. We have both kinds of music, country and Western. <laughs> <laughs> and they play rawhide. <laughs> Number three, I have 27 Dresses. Where Wait, where's Heigl. four? Oh. Yeah, you skipped four. Oh, sorry. Four. four is 27 Dresses. I okay. got ahead of myself. <laughs> Where Katherine Heigl and James Marsden get on top of the bar and sing Benny and the Jets. Yeah. Number three, I have Casablanca. Of all the gin joints, she walks into mine. Number two, this movie. The heads up game, the ordering the three glasses. So many clever moments. It's hard to beat that. 
And my number one, and even though it's my list, there is a right and wrong answer here. And the correct answer is Moss Eisley Cantina and A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> there is a right answer here. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of it. That's, yeah. That's you're, you're right on that. Best part. No blasters. <laughs> no blasters. <laughs> we don't serve them kind here. <laughs> you're right, wrong. <laughs> yeah, <you're true. laughs> Kevin, you're f- wrapping up favorite thing about this yep. movie. I I couldn't do a specific scene because everything is so great in this. Uh, so I actually put the story itself because Tarantino made a unique and original World War II movie that nobody else would ever even think about making, and it was amazing. The, it's it's hard to I I can't think of anybody. I don't think anybody would ever make. A movie like this other than Tarantino. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the revenge porn thing, I mean, I don't you know, <laughs> nobody's touching it like he does. It's right? just amazing. He does, yeah, I mean, he just does his thing. All right, next category, least favorite part about the movie. All right, Kevin, we'll go back to you. <laughs> uh I really <laughs> I was looking throughout the whole movie trying to find something I didn't like about this. And it came at the pretty much at the end. And it was the uh, when Christoph Waltz does the uh, bingo, really over the top, overacting. You don't like stuff. that? No, and he's like a like a little child. I think it was I think it was <laughs> too much to what he did on that. That, that I think that was the but it was very, very minute. Like, I, it was yeah. something that was like, yeah. uh, I fucking hate it. I was yeah. like, if I had to pick There's something, on maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe leave that a little bit That's a less. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just funny, a little bit too much, too much excitement. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it just yeah. showed how much of a fucking psycho he was. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. And I, I, maybe him saying that's a bingo, but then when he's like, how do you, how do you Americans say it? Yeah. It's it's a uh, just, it's just bingo. bingo. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> yeah, but I, I get the, yeah. I get what you're saying. If he's supposed to be a villain, right? Yeah, like right. he's supposed to be excited that he's getting off scot free, whatever. Yeah, and uh, but it was just really just what what gets yeah. me in that me. scene, sure. Kel, is the hypocrisy where he's talking about like because early in the movie he talks about how. The Jew Hunter is a nickname he got because it's what he does and he's good at it. And then in that right. scene, he's like, "It's a nickname is just a nickname. It's like they call yeah. him the little man. Like, you know, I don't get to choose my nickname. Yeah. Yeah. You wonder if it's remorse or if it's him just playing a part, right? Right. Oh, it's trying to get off the best he playing can. A part. More than likely. Yeah. But it is weird that he would even be crazy enough to switch sides or get out, I guess, and suggest to even, you know, kill all four of the most important people in the German army or whatever. So, like, Dude knew what was happening. He had there. them caught. Like, he, he could have right. stopped everything. So, yeah. Like, so there's a lot to his character. But, yeah, uh, I'll give you that nitpick. Dan, was that your least favorite thing? Uh, no, my least favorite thing was that opening scene because it's mm. hot, day. so tense and so mm. okay. I get you. Like, I get you. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's not bad. It's very very well sure. done because you feel yeah. every moment of it. And when they pan down to the floorboards and underneath, and you see the you know the woman with her hand over her face to try and keep any sound from coming out and you're like, Oh my God, this is, this is fucked. And like, that's really what people went through, you know, for difference of religion for, for being born to the wrong parents. And like, it's just the wrong parents, just different parents. The, the, (laughs) the climax of the realization where like, you're like, why are they speaking in English? And then at the end, whenever yeah. it's revealed of, I'm under the impression that they do not understand what we're saying. And it's like, Oh, exactly. fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, 
That opening scene's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. piggyback and say my least favorite thing was actually the bar scene for mm. the same exact reason. It's amazing, but it's so fucking tense mm. that it just, it like, it makes me like, uh, <laughs> just squirm yeah. with like anxiety or something like that. I don't know. It's hey, there's well, eyes and there's like, you, you feel like they're caught so many times yeah. in the scene from, from the start of her just talking with German soldiers. Yeah. And then they come down the stairs and they're like, Hey, what the fuck? Yeah. And then the major revealing himself in the back with the big DOS boot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. my least favorite thing. Nice. Dave. Mine is probably not getting a uh, like a reveal of whether whether Hans actually knew that Emmanuel was. Uh, I know what's her name, Shazana, you're, Shoshana, Shoshana. 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 You're absolutely right. Yep. Not not getting not getting that reveal of whether he actually knew it was her or not. You know, he gets her the glass of milk and everything, I know. but you're there's still no like connection of whether he like actually knew it was her or not and i like i also just didn't like that his his character you know the the jew hunter and then he you know, just lets this one get away why does he let one get away in in the sure. beginning of the story and then you know she has this great part in the story but there's not that like that resolute of connecting her back with with Hans like yeah yeah that's true know. yeah i yeah. i can answer half of that i totally agree with the part like i want to know if they know like yeah he orders the milk you see her when when she hears the voice and sees him you're like yeah. oh she's caught well, she thinks and then he she leaves knows. and she and like he, freaks he out like puts the cigarette you know? in there oh that's such a cool scene too it's speaking of tense scenes you're like oh is she he going to rat her out but i think he might let her go because at that time he liked the chase and so like I, it was like i know i've got you i'm gonna get you at some point like he and he's it because of the scene in the um the movie theater same situation when he just lets the italian and he catches i mean he knows they're not italian he brings bridget but he just lets them go in the theater now we know why later on but I still think there's some aspect of maybe it's the, the thrill of the chase, but not calling out the milk and just having us like wonder that part. I can totally agree but with. He, he allows in that scene, uh, that scene to move the theater to, or the showing of that movie to her theater. Yeah. That's why he's there. Right. So, but you don't know she, she's going to burn the place down. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's just the suspense of the whole movie. I get what you you're saying. Maybe he knew that yeah. she was gonna have revenge, but he doesn't. Know I that. didn't. I didn't even I get the know. like. I didn't even get the the sense that he knew it was her because he never saw her. The he milk. saw her run away. Why would he order a glass of milk? I mean, maybe it's because it's a yeah. Good, I'm, delic- I just like, kind of thought it. I chalked it up to coincidence. Honestly, I've never huh. like I every mean, time I yes, it uh, could be. I, I believe that a glass of milk would be something normal to order with a dessert. dessert. Right. Yeah. But what a coincidence, right? Of course, Tarantino is going to do that to us. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, I thought the glass of milk was more, um, more significant for us focusing on her rather than his connection. Maybe he just casually orders that. And and you're thinking through the eyes of her. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Mm. exactly. Just to heighten that fucking, like huh. just to heighten her sense of dread in that moment. Sure. That's a good, that's a good counter to that. I never really thought about it that way. That's um, funny. Cause I've never thought about it the way that you guys are <laughs> thinking about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my least I'm favorite I'm not a thing, smart man. <laughs> <laughs> my, my least favorite thing was that I didn't really understand how Shoshana should be owning a theater or that whole plot. So I understand the ex- explanation that her, like, I know how she got it. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong there, but I don't understand why she didn't just flee the country or get the hell out of Europe. Like, 
I mean, she could have been an immigrant at that point. When you see your entire family or close family die and you run away from the Nazis, I would think your best option would not be to just, you know, buy a theater or, or own a theater and be in the public eye. That was the other scary thing. Nazi, or in this, you know, obviously the Germans are in France. And so, like, you're not really there to advertise yourself, right? And a movie theater is something where you, she's out there putting stuff up. And, yeah, maybe it, it works out for her with, in the end with the revenge plan. But I don't think that was her initial plan. I think it kind of fell into her lap when Zoller, you know, falls for her and she kind of figures out something. Daniel? Um. Yeah, I think I agree with you that the that being like that in the public eye might not be a great thing, but mm-hmm. a lot of asylum seekers were turned away from other countries. Mm-hmm. A lot of, you know, True. the same thing that's happening now with the Ukrainians or, you know, mm-hmm. on and on and on throughout yeah. history is like True. It's terrible what's happening to you, but we don't want you. You know, sure. lots of yeah. lots. You know, there's only so many asylum spots open. You know, for people in the West. You know, mm-hmm. Great Britain is being bombed all the time. Um, you know, the United States and Canada are only allowing so many asylum seekers. You know, sure. through to their lands. You know, it's not it's not that sort of open like, oh, yeah, get as many people out as you can, you know, send them to America. We'll take them, Um, especially because for the beginning of World War Two, the United States saw another world war be brewing and said, no, we don't want to be a part of another world war. We just sent. Yeah hundreds of thousands of our men to die on European soil already. So we don't want to be involved. So we don't want to, you know, take in all these refugees and, you know, basically declare a side. Right. Yeah. I, I, I get that argument too. Um, I just think that, yeah, maybe broader sense that you wouldn't, You'd stay the hell out of the way at some point. You'd hide or oh, be yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, that part. <laughs> that part, I totally agree with you. It's like with. I can't. I would leave not the be. Balls. I would not be running a you know theater if I was no, be outside. Trying to be no. in hiding. Maybe no she's chance. taking the hide in plain sight approach. Yeah, <laughs> it worked, but it's pretty terrifying. So she must just have <laughs> bigger balls <Yeah>. than us. <laughs> All right. Next category, who won the movie? I think there's only a few answers here. Um, let's see. Who won? Uh, Kevin, you want first answer? I have two answers, so I don't know if I, oh, I have one no, that's in, the, I have one that's in the movie. One that's Eric. in the movie, one that's <laughs> not in the movie. Eric, you go first. <laughs> My answer is Christoph Waltz won the movie because like this was like his first role or first major role and mm-hmm. he he was the best in the movie like yeah i um also said the same thing i figured he would be one of the answers yeah. um yeah to touch on that he was a primarily german actor and so he actually was in a ton of movies but for okay. the american audience we yeah. had no idea who he was. So in terms of a worldwide phenomenon that he won best actor or well, yeah. best actor in a supporting role for this. Yeah. He definitely, this was his first big movie for sure. Yeah. Um, and I just said that like, he's not just a translator or a linguist or a talented linguist in this case, no, having spoken four languages in this movie, he's actually a good actor too. It's not like he's yeah. just a one trick pony. Like, Oh, I can speak different languages. He's actually yeah. really good and as an actor as well. So I, I said yeah. the same thing. I I didn't even account for the fact that he spoke four languages. I, I know, isn't that nuts? Italian, <laughs> yeah. French, German, and English. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Daniel. Uh, I think anyone who hates Nazis won this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a fair answer. Yes. 
I mean, I you know, so it, hopefully majority you go into this movie <laughs> hoping to see a lot of Nazis not feel good and die. <laughs> you get to see a lot of Nazis not feel good and then die. And I mean, you like, get one beaten in with a baseball bat. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's a great scene. Tons burned and shot. All yeah. of them get scalped like it's very much. I mean, you get to- it's very much a sweet redemption for anyone who hates fucking nazis it's beautiful yeah i mean we get to see hitler shot like multiple times point blank (laughs) in a burning theater and it burns down so he's shot and then burned to death i mean that's pretty fucking sick (laughs) yeah Yeah. fuck hitler would agree (laughs) yep dave (laughs) who in the movie for you you guys all had great answers but america Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Always. Very nice. Wins a lot of our movies. Um, well, all right, Kevin. And that's, that's actually uh, like this alternate history universe is actually really interesting because the Russians didn't get to Ma- or to um, yeah. Germany Freeze first. Them out. So it's it's just so like you wonder like what would have happened if you know the Soviet Union hadn't pushed half of Europe and then split mm-hmm. Europe you know behind the Iron Curtain like yep. what would have happened Yeah that would have happened I'm very right. interested in what would have happened if Hitler would have been killed you know around D Yeah, before that. yeah sure. Hitler yeah, and that's a good point and all his top dudes like Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll never know. Yeah. All right. Just interesting. All right, Kevin. Yeah, definitely. I I had a lot of trouble looking or trying to figure out who won this because, God, a lot of people could have won this movie. Yeah. Originally, I pushed Shoshana, but then she didn't actually see the Nazis die. <laughs> so I, I had to cross that one out. <laughs> She but dies, she and but her plan works. Yeah. So I ended up putting that in the actual movie, uh, that Out of Rain wins because he comes up on top uh, the actual character itself yeah yeah but the um but outside the movie i put tarantino did because this movie fucking kicks ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sure does yes. and again <laughs> uh, yeah as i mentioned <laughs> earlier <laughs> it put him back on the map yeah it's it's fucking awesome yeah i would definitely agree next category and this might be a shorter one favorite song moment or score scene Daniel, uh, I loved you the. I I was rocking out, but uh, <laughs> I like the opening uh, scene when the Nazis mm-hmm. are driving, and I believe it's Moonlight Sonata is playing. Nope, Fear uh, Elise, no, not no. Moonlight Sonata. Yeah, what is this? It's Fear Fear Elise. Oh, Fear Elise, yeah, yeah. When that's playing, and as the Nazis are driving up, it's like. Ugh. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's like that. Uh, oh yeah, well, it's it's that old like Jaws. I mean, basically, right? Yeah. And I also said Fear Elise for that same reason. Yeah, it just reminds me of Jaws and just that anticipation building and building, and yeah, good Beethoven stuff. Um, Kevin, I actually put. Um, I looked it up because I, originally I didn't realize it was a song. I thought it was just like some random guitar going some doing some crazy shit. That was it's called Slaughter by or Slaughter or Slaughter by Billy Preston. Hmm. And it's the um introduction of Stiglitz. Oh okay. Yeah. When and when it's just the guitar just down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. That is that, a good that is actually a song. <laughs> nice. Hi, uh, Eric. I don't know if mine is a song, just like Kevin was saying, but mine is the uh like the Spanish guitar that plays whenever the German dude is walking up to like kneel before Aldo. Oh. Yeah. And subsequently oh, get his good, head bashed oh, in with such the bat. A good scene. Oh, I love that. It's like that, so that classical guitar. Yeah, the sound. classical guitar. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a good scene. Dave? Mine's an actual song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it I a favorite song? Was song was was, uh, I don't know if this is a song or not. Well, this uh, one I figured. David Bowie's Cat People yeah. uh, playing before the, the premiere. Yeah. 
I, I was wondering if someone would pick that. I mean, it's really, yeah, the only song I knew. Well, in fear ways, but yeah, nice. Good job, and, everyone. And, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. and and Tarantino, <laughs> I mean, usually only has a couple of those kind of songs in each of his movies. Like in Pulp Fiction, I mean, you think of Dick Dale, yeah. and there's uh, maybe one or two more that are known, but like he kind of has his signature song in each of them, so I think Bowie kind of gets that for this. Next category. Does this movie get made now? Do I see some yeses? I don't know. <laughs> Daniel, what's your, what's what's your take? I think this gets made because Tarantino can get whatever he wants made, but I think <laughs> everyone of a certain political persuasion calls this woke Hollywood coming after the Nazis <laughs> because apparently I going after not. Nazis is a bad thing. They they <laughs> called I, I hope they called Wolfenstein. Woke. They called Wolfenstein woke, dude. And Wolfenstein is a game based on killing Nazis. Oh and they God. called it woke. That's it's sad. like no, it's not woke. It's a game about killing Nazis. That's the premise <laughs> yeah, that's of the game: cool. is killing Nazis. It's not yeah, them fight, fight evil. jamming their woke propaganda into a game. It's a game about killing Nazis. Right. Nazis. <laughs> Nazis. Yeah, I, I said. I said no. More, more to that side where I just at the time there was controversy, and that was you know fourteen years ago. I think I said. 14, 15 years ago, and there was controversy then. So can you imagine what it would be like now? I I just, like, maybe there's a historical fiction plot out there, obviously, but just the way that this was done, and I just, and Tino only has one movie left. So if you're thinking that way, I also said no. So I I said no, but I, I get Tarantino could do whatever he wants. <laughs> Kevin? I've got the same pretty much agree I'm trying not to go political but I'm just thinking movie aspect <laughs> is that um, <laughs> it's not I, political I I to bash Nazis <laughs> no it's not it's not political it's just but I'm movie. just trying not to just yeah I'm, I'm just trying to go with the movie thing right now um, um I, I said I don't think so because Careful, uh, <laughs> because Tar- no Tarantino has a limit of 10 movies and he's working on yeah, his 10th now and I think he will Stick with that. I, I think he's, yeah, he's pretty oh, good agreed. with being Yeah, but I mean, if you take out also, this movie and he decides he wants to make this movie at number 10 instead of whatever hmm. he's making now, right. like he would still make it. Like, right. I think but, he like, would, I, ah, that's a good argument. You're going to let me finish. I'll say Sorry. I don't think if, Sorry, if, Kel, if he doesn't Sorry. do, if he, if he doesn't do 10 movies, I don't think anybody will try to remake a Tarantino movie. Mm. Or even try to rip off a Tarantino movie. Has there any been anything that no. Tarantino has ever made that that they that anybody has tried to remake or recreate or do a Not sequel yet. to? It's it's he, I, right. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, that's the yeah, thing. Is, there, there, there's my two fair. points. Yeah, Kevin, I think you and I take this question differently. I take this question as yeah. if this movie wasn't made, could it be made today? And you take this. Oh, that was another like, one. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody could write this movie other than Tarantino. Right. So, but I'm saying. No, I'm saying if, saying if he if, you if he never it. made yeah. Inglorious Bastards <laughs> in 2000, it would never be nine. made. But <laughs> I'm. Listen, if he didn't make it <laughs> in 2008 <laughs> or nine, and then so he didn't have. He's up to eight movies. He makes this next movie that he's going to make, and then he decides he wants to do Inglorious Bastards for his 10th movie. I think he would still oh, make yeah. Inglorious Bastards. Because oh, for sure. If this movie wasn't made and this was the last movie, yes. but I, it, it, I don't know. Yeah. So I, 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 I think that's a great way of answering that. And um, if anyone was going to go against the controversy and just do what he wants, it's Tarantino. So I think there is a really good argument there. I think – I want to see what his last movie is. And I think that might help dictate what my answer might be. If that makes sense. If it's not political in any sense, 
that might make me think that he's kind of gone away from that, and so maybe he wouldn't make it. Otherwise, it's Tarantino. So, yeah, I, I, I do agree with that argument for the most part. Anybody else have anything on this? I agree with Daniel. I think if I think if uh, if Tarantino hmm, wanted to make fucking nice. Inglorious Bastards two, he would do sure. it. Yeah, I get. I be interesting. I, I am curious to see okay. what he does for his last well, one. Yeah, where would that go though? I'm just oh, saying, if go. he wanted to make it, <laughs> I mean, he, he was and could. Yeah, <laughs> he could go, he could go after Stalin. Yeah. You know, Stalin's yeah. a piece Oh yeah, of shit. there you go. You know, sure. they could do the bastards yeah, for Stalin. True. Mm. I mean, who would be in the same and be in the same <laughs> timeline? Yeah, yeah be in that same that. timeline where like they killed one son of a bitch. Now they got to kill another one, <laughs> or they could go after Harry. Let's call, Wait, Harry. Let's no, call that. him up. I'd watch that movie in a fucking second. Yeah, Kim yeah. Kim yeah. Kim. Or they could do him in <laughs> the Pacific. You know, they could have <laughs> bastards in the Pacific. Yeah. Like whatever. If Tarantino yeah. wanted to, like, I guarantee a company would be like one of the studios would be like, yeah, we'll fucking release that film. We don't give a shit. It's a Quentin Tarantino it movie. Even- it makes us look good because we've got a Tarantino movie under us. Uh, we're going to make some money. Um, you know, it's rated R, so they never make as much money as PG-13 movies, but, you know, right. they'll still make good yeah. money back on it. And you get sure. to, you know, you get that, 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 you know, cash that comes with uh, having a great orator doing a movie for your studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it would yeah, definitely sure. cheapen that movie if they did that. And I don't think I, he they would won't. Do that. No. So right. that's why no I don't way. think it would be made. Yeah. But that's, that's I, yeah, like I, mean, I said, you and like I come at this differently. I assume yeah, yeah. that the movie hadn't been made. All right. Next. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm right. sorry. We're just. And no, no, I, I think that's <laughs> we're bantering. Yeah, this tell us how bantering. you guys look at it differently, and then Daniel explain yourself, and then Kevin will just say, "Oh yeah, I'm right," <laughs> and then that'll get you more annoyed, and you'll try to explain yourself. Like, no, no, we we it's look like at this cycle. differently, and Kevin will be like, "Yeah, I know, I'm right." <laughs> <laughs> All right, next category we've got. Eric, you line get me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> what? We're on favorite line from the movie. And I said, oh, <laughs> I said from Bat- Brad Pitt as Lieutenant Aldo Rain, <laughs> you probably heard we ain't in the prisoner taking business. We're in a killing <laughs> Nazi business. And cousin business <laughs> is a booming. Probably heard we ain't in the prisoner taking business. We in the killing Nazi business. And cousin business is a booming. <laughs> that was my Sea Ort, not my Brad Pitt. Business is, is a boom. <laughs> I want to follow up on a Brad Pitt line if I can. It's already been touched on. It's hard to follow up for me. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say the goddamn rendezvous was in a fucking basement. <laughs> it's a tavern. Yeah, in a basement. No fight in the basement offers a lot of difficulties. Number one being, you're in a fighting in a basement. (laughs) You know, fighting in a basement offers a lot of difficulties. Number one being, you're fighting in a basement. Well done. (laughs) I had fuck a duck. Fuck a duck. <laughs> wow, I kind of forgot about that one. Nice. <laughs> it's hard to find one liners in here because uh, it's a lot of I've got one. It's all dialogue. All right. Yeah, I've got a one liner, though. It's how you get to Carnegie oh, Hall, don't you? Practice. Why you get to Carnegie Hall, don't you? Practice. Oh, that was one of mine. The other one I had was, uh, we got a word for that in English. It's called suspicious. Yeah, we got a word for that kind of odd in English. It's called suspicious. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I, I also had the Colonel Hans Landa, Aldo Rain um, conversation at the end where Landa's oh, yeah. like, are you mad? 
What have you done? I made a deal with your general for that man's life after Brad Pitt shoots him. And Alderaan's like, yeah, they made that deal. But that, but they don't give a fuck about him. They need you. And Atlanta's <laughs> like, you'll be shot for that. Nah, I don't think so. We're like chewed out. I've, I've been, been chewed, chewed out, out before. before. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be shot for this? Nah, I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out before. <laughs> Just don't give two fucks. <laughs> I had a, I had my my backup line was because I we talked about the basement a lot, but it was in the same scene. It was more serious. It was uh, if I had my way, you'd wear that goddamn uniform for the rest of your pecker sucking life. <laughs> that ain't practical. At some point, you're gonna have to take it off. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a little something you can't take off. Yep. And then he carves yeah. the Nazi sign. So I'm so going to give you something that take you can't take off. off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Anybody else got any? I mean, there's a million. There's. I actually yeah. think the bingo conversation is kind of funny. Like, I laugh out loud to yeah. that one. There's not a lot to actually laugh out loud about. That one's like just, no, it's, how do you say that in English? It's just bingo. <laughs> it's just bingo. <laughs> It was it was the the, the delivery. It's cheesy. On that See, day. for me, it doesn't. It, that yeah. scene makes me tense too, because it's like this asshole is yeah. getting exactly what he wants. So I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and in true Tarantino fashion, he does end it with some satisfaction, at least. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Fucking Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. I also liked when the bear Jew was. Getting ready, he's like, Teddy fucking ball game. Like, I feel like he <laughs> tried to be a new or a um a Boston. He was probably more of a New Yorker the way he was acting, but uh I just kind of <laughs> thought that was hilarious. That that character is one of the best. Hitler telling his men not to even speak the name. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, which yeah. makes him even that much more of a legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that whole any of those di- any of that dialogue that makes, is great. It's like Voldemort. Their, 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 <laughs> mm, good point. Don't you see yeah. there's a whole point of the mission of this it's like is Beetlejuice. to go behind the lines and then scare them and be scared of the Americans yeah. coming in. Again, there's a, almost a sense that Hitler knew that doom was coming. Not necessarily the way it did, right. but it sounded like he kind of was assuming once they're on the beach, this could be a different game. Next category. Most likely to be off-screen drunk. Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) It's getting better every time. (laughs) It's Kevin. I actually started laughing in my head before it was coming. (laughs) Because you see, you better. see Dave get this smile, bit. and then he just kind of like creeps up, <laughs> and then you're waiting for it. And he's like, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just say Hitler because of what I just mentioned, <laughs> and how he kind of might have known the war was losing at the time, and so he was probably drinking behind doors. Um, Daniel. Um. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. <laughs> Shit. No. Um, I, uh, I was watching this movie and I was trying to figure it out and I just, like, there's a lot of high pressure to situations. So, like, a lot of those guys are – Michael Myers' character. He uh, yeah, seems like he drinks a lot. <laughs> yeah, good. Good answer. Yeah, the old man sitting at the piano. He, that dude just, he just drinks. Ripping, ripping beer bongs. Barrett? I said uh, Christoph's character, Hans. Hmm. Just because, like, high pressure situation. Sure. He's killing a lot of people or telling people to kill a lot of people. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know <laughs> right. he yep. kill. Oh, he does strangle Bridget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That happens. He sure does. Yeah, it's so his character is has such a bizarre arc. Yeah. Going from that beginning to the end. Like who would have thought the twist would have been him yeah. turning on the Nazis? Would not have guessed that. Well done as in 
like you want pure evil, but again, you understand that this guy is trying to get his way out of it, which again is evil. Yeah. But yeah. Tarantino does such a good job of of showing him twit turn. I mean, like it's so wild to see that. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, Kevin. Oh, I just put all of the bastards. Mm. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been the obvious choice. It <laughs> was a very obvious choice. It. Like they're like, probably yeah. all hanging out drinking. Like when we're <laughs> yeah, not like, seeing them. We just on killed screen. a bunch of fucking Nazis. Let's go have a fucking That's, beer. Let's go yeah, take some shots. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And um, I think Brad Pitt's character is from Tennessee. So I, I oh yes, yeah, yeah, he is Memphis. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> Next category, we've got casting our friends. Anybody I failed want to go this, with? this episode. That's all right. Eric, go first. I, I have three. Okay. I said uh, Kevin is the lady. What's her name? Shoshana? Shoshana? No, no, no the actress. Bridget, Bridget Van Harm- Hammerstark. Yeah, Bridget. Hammerstark. Kevin is Bridget because I feel like he would pick a rendezvous point in a basement with the enemy in it. <laughs> <laughs> at a bar. At a bar. Let's yeah. emphasize yeah, at, a bar. at a bar. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> On screen. <dude. laughs> I heard these be- this, this is a good bar. I heard it was a good bar. Going yeah, <laughs> it's cool. It's in a basement. Yeah, but that's terrible <laughs> tactically. But it's in a basement. It's cool. It'll be You're fine. Wrong. <laughs> it's cool. It's a basement. Yeah, but we will be murdered in there. No, no but it's fine. a basement. It's cool. <laughs> Everyone's murdered. I said Daniel. The Germans never hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> I said Daniel is Hans because of heel turn. Because nice. he, he flipped sides. A heel on never a heel turn. No, I, I, no, 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 you wouldn't. No, I'm not, I'm not saying, I know, I know. And that's why you would turn on them. I hate Illinois Nazis. (laughs) And then. I hate Nazi punks. (laughs) The last one I had was John is the bear Jew because he likes baseball. (laughs) Nice. That's it. Baseball. Nice. (laughs) Um, Daniel, did you have a list? Uh, I couldn't cast anyone because the bastards are too hardcore, even for us. <laughs> like, fair. Like, yeah. none of us. Are I was like, hardcore. oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I hate Nazis, but I'm not taking a baseball bat to the head of one. <laughs> BJ Novak yeah. was a bastard. <laughs> yeah, but he was yeah. cutting their and fucking he was skull the little off. man. So <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. So man. I guess Dave could be <laughs> BJ Novak. <today. laughs> you took that. No, I'm just kidding. That's hilarious. All right, Kevin, I'm mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, did you have a list? Yeah, I got I got four here. All right. Let's, let's see I here. got some random, very random ones. Uh, I had put Jordan as the bear Jew because he'd be the one ready to kick somebody's ass. <laughs> Yeah. Before, I, before you go on, I also had Bogart <laughs> for the Bear Jew, which is funny. This is the first time we've ever casted him, I think, or one no, of maybe. He's been no, he's been it's another. Not. Yeah, but I had this. I had that same thing, and I said because I could see him going around swinging a bat at people. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious Nazis, <laughs> fucking Nazis. I put, well, yeah, yeah, that too. And then uh, I put Cody actually as uh, Shoshana. Because he'd be the one that would have a, a scheming a plan to kill a bunch of people behind the scenes unnoticed and know that that film would ignite very quickly and just make it happen. I could see that. So <laughs> I, I yeah. figured there'd be like uh, some Rusty sort of like, how can we do this? And this is going to work. And I'm just going to go behind the scenes and do it. Yeah. I, and then I put actually Dave as Bridget Van Hammerschmark. Because he'd be hot. the one that he had a the fashionable shoe would be left behind, and he'd oh, be the one wearing the, the fashionable, fashionable shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not Kevin and Daniel Skechers or my sandals. <laughs> you think I'm leaving some expensive shoes behind? You're insane. <laughs> if you got shot in the leg, maybe. No, I'd still grab those. <laughs> 
Don't forget yo, my shoes. This day was worth eighty dollars just <laughs> on its own. The other one is worth eighty dollars too. You think I'm leaving that shit behind? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I like to think of like That's Matt being guess. in that that uh, spot and like. He leaves his mismatched fucking socks. <laughs> Someone comes down and like, so you they're like, they're two socks. That motherfucker. <laughs> That's hilarious. Actually, uh, I casted myself as Wilhelm. And it's because I would be out uh, celebrating for something like uh, – a birth of a child and find myself in a pickle. The birth of your sister's best friend's child. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, are you trying to tell but, us something? No, no, not right now. No. Kevin, you the, don't uh, end up getting drunk pickles. Jesus I end up in Christ. Drunk pickles. Kevin has to have sex first to have a baby. <laughs> Welcome to the movie podium. <laughs> it's like a book club. But for movies. movies. <laughs> but for. But for. I would definitely so be. Uh, I mean, oh. I'd, I'd, <laughs> oh my God. Jesus fucking God. <laughs> I felt that one was going to be a good one. I I'm felt sorry. that one. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't just leave it. Kevin, did you have any other reason why you were Wilhelm? <laughs> no, I would just for uh, celebrating. Yeah. I, are I you would, a Nazi? <laughs> just fucking Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not casting myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Bad, not, yeah. I, I just move. can't explain this. <laughs> I mean, he's just the dude. I was just going to say I trusted a word from an enemy while hammered. So I did not cast myself. Um, no, I did cast Jordan, Cody. as you mentioned, as the bear Jew. I casted Cody as Hans. I'd said similar to what you had about the scheming, but also he had the big scheme and also would figure out a way out of World War II. Cody's playing both <laughs> sides. Hmm. Yeah, Play I, have, I have Eric as Marcel, the the projectionist. Oh yeah, and cool. Her lo- Shoshana's lover. Yeah, and I said because he'd be the project the best projectionist that we got. You'd be killing those. That's true. I I'd be killing Kevin. those movies and everyone in that movie theater. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have Kevin as Major Hellstrom. Because his real name is August Deal. Yes. Yeah, we share our last name. Well, whoa. And then <laughs> my last one is I have Daniel as Donnie Donowitz, a.k.a. Antonio Margarete. Margarita. And Dave as Omar <laughs> Almer uh, or Dominic De Coco. Because I could see them trying to pretend <laughs> that they know another language <laughs> with hand gestures and by just saying yep, their name yep. in Italian or their <laughs> Italian sounding name. Ah, it's me. Daddy, it's a little cool. Yep, that's pretty much it. Dominique de Coco. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. That's, a, that's definitely Dave and Daniel right there. <laughs> when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, not a That's beautiful. And with that, so next we got podium roll for any of the top build cast members. First, we have Brad Pitt. Now, I am curious how this one falls, because I think we might get some mixed answers here. Does anybody want to say yes? Got one? Uh, I'm the only one. I think you are. I'll say yes. Okay. I'll go this, Moneyball, and seven. Hmm. Seven. Interesting. Um, I, I want to say Fight Club because Fight Club was one of my favorite movies, but he's not really – he's not really – like, I mean, he's not like the – I mean, he is a main character in Fight Club, but he's he's not the main character of Fight Club. It's not Club. real. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> he's an I, illusion. <laughs> I uh, said he – I also said no. Um, I think we should do like a podium episode with him. We'll just have Dave answer that again. <laughs> but uh, – <laughs> 
But I, I said no because there's just too many iconic roles that he's been in. And I, I think he might be my favorite actor of this generation. So I would say no. It, it's a great character. I mean, he gets to kill Nazis and sound like a redneck. Hard to beat. <laughs> he, I mean, that's the way is, to do it. I mean, somehow <laughs> that, that description doesn't even top in mine either. Did anybody... What Kevin, um, don't give your list, but uh, why, why, yes, my bad. No, it's all right. <laughs> come on, just think future. I'll say, I think it's his best, it's his best Tarantino movie. See, I, I don't even and say that. I, I think well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, per, per, yeah, that, one, mostly. that one is um, so yeah, good. Sure, I don't want to give away my top three, but the uh, <laughs> but I think I honestly think this is his best movie. Okay, wow. Crazy, cool. Have you seen Moneyball? I've yeah, seen the movie. Exactly. I, no, it's not necessarily is. It's a combination of his role and the movie combined. Yeah, I, I mean, it's your opinion, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's wrong apparently. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't say that. No, sometimes. That. Kevin, sometimes. I agree. But I agree. No, that this I don't is say that. Movie. I say that. I think this oh, okay. would be one of the most. Hey, con- I, I, don't. I thought that would be the most controversial. I mean, we have my, we have Christoph Waltz. I'm sure we all said yes for that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's also in Django Unchained. He actually won Best Supporting Actor twice. For this in, in Django. His, his character in Django is so good too. It's yeah. it is. I mean, it almost evolves from this. But yeah, I would this one's an easy one. He's also uh, yeah. Blowfield in Kevin's favorite movie, Spectre. Uh, Blofeld, but Blofeld. Yes. Well <laughs> Yeah, and, it's and, not <laughs> my favorite. Blowfield. <laughs> Blowfield. You know what a blowfield is? Ten. Feel where you go and blow somebody. <laughs> oh, no. We can. We gotta watch the Blowfield of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of cocaine going on in the field. Blowfield. There is no I. <laughs> That's fair. The- is that what he's doing through the whole movie? Is that what he's got in his little box as he's just <laughs> snorting coke <laughs> through the movie? Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's uh, not. He was snorting it. Yeah. I see, thought he was putting it up his nose. You used to snort tobacco. Like That's snuff gross. is like powder. It's like tobacco powder. Huh. Now you eat it. Um, yeah, that's why I was. We had, about I thought he was just Matt. I thought he was just getting a little bump. Yeah, Matt. That's why your stomach hurts after you <laughs> you do snuff oh, all the time. That's right. You're not supposed yeah, to eat it. Oh. <laughs> Noted. Um, Mike, Michael Fossbender, I said no, actually. Did anybody have a yes? I mean, again, he's in it for only 18 minutes. He has he does a great job. So if you yeah. did have him on this and yes, I can see why. But um, I said no. Anybody have a yes? No. I didn't I have didn't. him on the list. Yeah, I didn't have him on the list. Yeah, I had, he actually, I had oh, Melanie. I had Melanie on there. Oh. Um, mm. Yeah, she. De- I mean, but this she was definitely was in the on movie there. so much, and but also yes, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I real quick on Fassbender, his career after this movie really took off, kind of like Christoph Waltz. He was actually up for Best Actor in Steve Jobs, and and Jobs. He's also um, David in the Alien prequels. And Magneto in the reboot of the X Men, oh, yeah, which right. I thought he does a great job in all of that. Well, everything that I've talked about. He also was famous for um, showing his long dong in 2011's <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Have you ever seen Shame? Oh, I, you did it! He I was it. gonna bring that up. I was gonna say that he. Oh, oh he my did. god, <laughs> Matt! Oh, man. I just, that one was for Cody for he sure. He showed his long dong and he preed. <laughs> Damn, I got <laughs> I got some rolls. Um, we also had two. I had two more, and both yeses. But um, Diane Kruger, our girl from National Treasure, yeah, yeah, was in greatest this. movie of all time. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, Daniel Bruhl, who plays Frederick Soler, he's a easy yes in this case, but he's also Baron Zemo and the Captain America series. And yeah. also, he was really, really good in the movie Rush, if you'd seen that. Rush Hour. About, um, I've seen Rush Hour. Yeah, Rush Hour, <laughs> about the uh, IndyCar series with um, Chris Tucker. 
<laughs> the delivery on that was fucking amazing. I, I actually hit one. <laughs> it actually, I actually worked. really want to. I want to watch Rush. Oh, oh, there that was a split second where I thought, "Oh, Chris Tucker's in that." <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I haven't, um, I haven't and, seen Rush, but I do want to see it. And we finished this kind podcast. Of like, it's kind of like Red Heat, but it's better. Oh <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only they're in indie cars. <laughs> <laughs> and we finished this podcast with our podium list of the year 2009. <laughs> Daniel, you're dancing. Let's let's get it over with. The old dancing Daniel. <laughs> okay. Number three, I have The Hangover. Ooh. Number nice. two, I have Up. Nice. And my number one movie mm. for 2009 <laughs> is <laughs> Inglorious Bastards. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You were about to say 2024. 20, oh, nine. <laughs> Eric? I had at number three. I had Harry Potter <laughs> and the Half Blood Prince. Number nice. two was The Proposal, uh-huh. mm. and then number one was Inglorious Bastards of twenty oh nine. Twenty oh six. You graduated, <laughs> Kevin. I was almost almost went Daniel's route, but I had a. I did swerve after I looked more into it. Wow. Number three with up as a number th- as a number four outside looking in. Oh, okay. Uh, number three is uh, Terminator Salvation. Say that one Thank again. Thank you, Cody. Terminator <laughs> Salvation. <laughs> you didn't slur it that time. <laughs> number two is The Hangover. What nice. you're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You can get balloons. <laughs> number one. Get hangovers anymore. Number one is Inglorious Bastards. Oh wow. yeah. Oh, are we getting the sweep? Uh, Dave, what about you? Will you keep up the sweep? Diggity diggity Dave. All right. Don't, Earth to Dave. I got it, <laughs> stupid. Hey, don't call me stupid. Yes, this movie makes my podium. Oh. Is there in no particular order? Oh. It leaves it a mystery. Well, he's looking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking it up. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> IMDb. On Google. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. <laughs> looking at my notes. Dave. Let me share my screen. Spark notes. My notes. <laughs> Dave. If you want to know what I was looking at before, I was looking at bison's tickets. Uh, oh, for a second, I thought you were just looking at pictures of bison, and I was going to be so happy. <laughs> it's like The Hangover, Watchmen, and Glorious Bastards. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Oh, I forgot Watchmen came out this year. I'm, yeah. st- I'm still with my three, but uh, that's, that's probably on my outside looking in. Yeah, I actually didn't forget that this came out this year. Uh, it might have made my list. Um, I said yes, that Inglorious Bastard made my list. Um, outside looking in, I ha- wanted to mention 500 Days of Summer came out this year as well. My number three was Adventureland. My number two was The Watchmen. And for the clean sweep, we'll pretend Dave said one, Inglorious Bastards. Bow, bow, bow. Yeah, this wait, is a wait, first. Wait. I'll say Inglorious Bastards is number one. That's a first. I'm pretty sure, at least. 2009 kind of sucked. No, I thought it was tough. I mean, they're like the top, at least. Like, there may not yeah. have been a ton, but like. I was just saying to Daniel earlier, like, I was, I was looking at 2009 movies, and like, there's a ton of movies, but there are not a lot of ones that I like. Yeah, sure. Um, Zombie Land, Moon, yeah. uh, Moon. If you'd ever seen Moon, it's really good. Um, yeah, Up. You guys yeah. set up. Yep. Terminator right, well, Salvation only made oh, my yeah, top man. three because it was like, 
It got up the, it, 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 re, Reboot a Terminator series after Terminator 3, which fucking sucked. Their dance is <laughs> okay to watch, though. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into our show. Please like and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, <laughs> Apple, Wait or wherever second. you get your podcast. Wait you can a also second. Also, follow us on your favorite favorite social media platforms for clips, updates. Wait, hold on. I think Kevin has something on a movie watch. All right, Kevin. This isn't oh. only a top three fucking uh, 2009 movie, but this is a top three favorite of uh, movie of mine of all time. And oh. I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll very, wow. very, very, very okay. strongly <laughs> say this. <laughs> nice. Very, right. very strongly say that this is a top three movie for me nice. of all time. Can we quote nice. you on that, Kevin? Yes. We're gonna- this is a top what three movie of mine make, of all time. Make that a real. That <laughs> Kevin just derailed, like, felt the need to interrupt Matt trying to close out the show to go, I just want everybody to know that this might be... No, well, it's, my definitely, it's no, definitely. No, it is. <laughs> definitely. Dave, I quote: "This is a top three movie for me of all time." <laughs> all right, Matt, you want to do the outro again? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning into our show. Please You're like welcome. and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on your favorite social media platforms for clips, updates, and opportunities to vote on a movie we watch. Later. See ya. I'd really like to thank Dave for showing up today. Bye. <laughs> thank you, Dave. What do you mean? I'd like What's to thank you. To me? Thank you. You're the talent, baby. Thank you, Dave. <laughs>